There's no question that pickup trucks are an important segment of vehicles here in North America. It is the best selling vehicle here in Canada. The Ford F-150 has dominated sales for over 50 years and overall pickup trucks just do incredibly well, both in the States, but here in Canada as well. So it's very interesting that here in 2021, two manufacturers have decided to get into the compact pickup truck segment. This, my friends, is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Ultimate. Now this is, as Hyundai calls it, a sport adventure vehicle. I don't know how that's gonna catch on, but I hope maybe we as a community can figure out a term for these vehicles because they aren't full on pickup trucks. They do look like pickup trucks. They do have a lot of functionality that a pickup truck has, but this is based on the same platform that we saw with the Hyundai Tucson. So this is more of a crossover. We can't call it a crossover utility vehicle because it's already a crossover. So we got to figure out a name that works that isn't a sport adventure vehicle. Now, Hyundai figures that they're targeting buyers who live in urban areas. So i.e. downtown Montreal, big city stuff, people who maybe don't have a lot of space for a full size or even a mid size pickup truck. They wanna have something a little bit more adventure ready, something like this Santa Cruz. Now, unlike the Tucson, this does not use the hybrid engine. This comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, produces 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque, and uses the new eight speed wet dual clutch transmission that we've seen a little bit now from Hyundai. But the front end is very similar to the Tucson. Obviously the rest of the vehicle is gonna be kind of different as you progress towards the back of it. The back trunk slash tailgate is going to be the most important. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But the idea for this is to fill a need for people who don't need those bigger pickup trucks, but still wanna have some flexibility because this does give you quite a bit of flexibility, especially the way this vehicle is sold. Now we have a 5,000 pound tow rating here, and it also comes with a standard tonneau cover. It's retractable as well. So it's not just a removable one like we see on most pickup trucks. This one's retractable. So you basically have it built in and you have that functionality to be able to have a covered, more or less weatherproof trunk area. You can open it up and have more of a pickup truck bed. Now, why it's so important is because Ford has also come out with their new Maverick that is also a small pickup truck based on the Bronco Sport and made it into a pickup truck. That's gonna be selling pretty well as well, assuming there is a market for this. This kind of goes head to head also with something like the Honda Ridgeline that has been around for quite some time, but it's never really grown in tons of popularity. I mean, there are some enthusiasts out there but they haven't really exploded in popularity. So I'm gonna be curious to see how well the Santa Cruz does, how well the Maverick does, and overall, if there is a market for it, because both Hyundai and even Ford know that the traditional pickup truck buyer, somebody who already has a full size, a heavy duty, or even a mid-size pickup truck, likely isn't gonna be shopping around for this. However, if you're in the market for a Tucson, you might wanna consider this instead. But before we go around back, I wanna talk about what makes this ultimate, ultimate. This has 20 inch rims, LED daytime running lights, LED taillights, and the LED projector headlights, rain sensing wipers, the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment system, ventilated front seats, home link, a 64 color ambient light system, 360 degree cameras, and Hyundai's blind spot view system. So you can see as you're turning with your turn signals, if there's anybody in your blind spot with the cameras there. On top of that, with the base model, we only have two trims here in Canada, but the base model, you also get things like forward collision alert, blind spot information, rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, high beam assist, and heated front seats, heated steering wheel, and wireless phone charging. Now, it depends on which option you go with. There's an option for the preferred trim, but essentially this is as fully loaded as it comes here in Canada. And I think that people will be interested in it as it is more affordable than some of the pickup trucks that we've driven so far. But I wanna go around back. Let's talk about the tailgate and then we'll jump on the road to talk about how the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz is as a small pickup truck. Now I had the opportunity when I picked this up to park this vehicle next to the 2022 Ford Maverick, giving me an idea of how these two look both as vehicles themselves, but also the overall functionality of the trunk area, the tailgate area. And one of the big differences between them is just where the actual floor is, the highest point that you have, or the actual floor loading area for the tailgate. On this, it is kind of high. It's about maybe four or five inches higher 
than it is on the Ford Maverick. The thing is though, you do have a trunk space here. So if we open up our little sliding tonneau cover there, you do have a trunk space here. It's got you know, hydraulic lift on it, so it's a little easier to open up. Hyundai says that it is lockable and you do have you know, ability to see into it with the lights. Plus there is a drain for it. So if you wanted to load this up with ice or things like that and use it as sort of a cooler when you're going on a camping trip, that might work out well. So you do have that, that is more or less weather resistant. And then you've got you know, your regular bed here. And then there are some accessories to extend the bed and a bunch of tie down points on the inside. That's gonna make this thing quite a bit more functional because of the way that it's set up. Now, because the sliding tonneau cover is built in, you do end up losing some trunk space, some bed space here. You won't be able to fit quite as much into the back of this just because the equipment back there takes up space. So you do lose a little bit of depth and obviously a little bit of height because this does sit a little bit higher. But I think for the most part, people who are gonna be buying this are not gonna be using the bed all the time. It's nice to have the tonneau cover, it's nice to be able to close it up, but I think for the most part, people are gonna still be using this pretty much empty, except when they actually do go you know, camping or whatever it may be, there might be some reasons why you're gonna need it, so you've got the functionality there. But you've got different places to be able to tie down straps, so if you do have larger items in here, you wanna make sure they're safe, plus you do have sort of like the T-bar system here, so you can add accessories to the top portion here. I think one thing that some people might be looking at would be a bed cover, but it will have to be designed specifically for this, much like the first generation Honda Ridgeline. This does have a trim that essentially comes from the cab of the vehicle into the bed area. Because this is a unibody vehicle, it is all one solid piece of metal, the frame, the body and everything. But also there isn't a distinction between the bed and the cab. It is essentially one unit there. So a couple things to note about this as we've compared it to some of the other pickup trucks we've driven. But again, this is gonna be targeting people who don't have a pickup truck already and want something with a little bit more flexibility than your standard crossover. Now I wanna jump on the road. I wanna talk about how this vehicle performs, handles, drives, and a lot more about it to see if this might be the next vehicle for you and what I think will be the future for the small pickup truck market here in Canada. All right, my friends, let's talk about the fuel economy. When it comes to this Hyundai Santa Cruz, we're looking at 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers. How does that compare to the Tucson? Again, it's based on the same platform and similar look that completed our test loop in 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers, but that's a hybrid, this isn't. And this is the engine that we find in the larger Hyundai vehicles. It's more or less the same engine that's found on the 2.5 liter versions of the Genesis vehicles. Different engine code, slightly different tuning, but kind of the same engine family. So you're looking at pretty good power numbers for a vehicle that isn't overly heavy. I mean, it's not a whole lot more really than the Tucson, just the way that this is configured, right? Yeah, it's a little bit longer. It's got a bed instead of a parcel area. So I mean, slightly different overall design, but the idea is, it still works out pretty well. Now on the outside, I said that this kind of makes more sense if they offered the hybrid, at least offered it. That's one of the selling features of the Ford Maverick is because it's available as a hybrid. Some people may only look at that and some may not and just skip it outright because again, the target demographic, the type of people who are gonna be buying this are likely gonna be people who live in the city. They're gonna be you know, looking for something that's going to work as a daily driver and something that they can do you know, some fun stuff with on the weekend. So having a good fuel efficient engine is gonna be critical. So the hybrid on the Ford Maverick might work out better. But the fact that this has quite a bit of power that's a plus. I mean, you know, 281 horsepower and about 311 pound feet of torque. That's really good from a small vehicle like this. This gives it quite a bit of power in this, you know, non existent segment. But again, if you're shopping between the Tucson or other compact crossovers, you're going to be getting a sportier experience, at least a more performance oriented experience. This isn't really sporty, but with a bigger engine, you've got that. So I want to talk though, because I always like to be proven wrong. And I hope I am proven wrong with a vehicle like this, right? I expect this to sell well enough that Hyundai will keep it around. 
but I don't expect this to be the next great thing that comes out of any manufacturer. I, I'm still not 100% sold on this segment being that popular. You take a look at the Honda Ridgeline, it's not like they've sold thousands and thousands a day, right? You know, it's an option. Wouldn't say it's a popular option. So we'll see how these do. But again, probably out here, you know, we're in kind of farm country. We have a lot more space. It's a small town. You know, a lot of people do buy pickup trucks, but a lot of people buy heavy duty pickup trucks. A lot of people buy, you know, full size pickup trucks. So I don't think I'm going to be seeing a whole lot of these out here where I am, but I do expect if you live in bigger cities or even, you know, heavily suburbanized areas, you'll probably see them. Now let's talk about how this performs ride, drive and everything, because you know, obviously you're looking at this video, you wanna know about that, you might be interested in buying it. It drives exactly like the Tucson. I mean, if I couldn't close my eyes, but you know, if I forgot that there was a bed on the back, I would just think I'm driving the Tucson. Obviously it helps that the interior here is pretty much the same thing that we saw on the Tucson. But as I drive around, you know, I'm getting that crossover, that you know, slightly raised car-like experience in a vehicle that happens to have a bed on the back. So you're getting a pretty good ride. And this doesn't use leaf springs in the back like typical full-size pickup trucks. It's an independent rear suspension. So, And they also say, Hyundai, that this has a self-leveling rear suspension. So if you do load it up with things, it is supposed to raise itself back up. So you're still at essentially the same level as you're driving around. So you have slightly better you know, road mannerisms when you're driving along. You know, your headlights aren't going to be pointing up into the sky. So small details like that. You know, there's a lot going on with that bed area too. You've got the side steps built in. I do like the fact that the tonneau cover is built in as well. Again, depending on what you're buying this for, that might come in handy. Yes, you do lose out a little bit on how much you can really put in there. You can't put quite as much, you know, a large item as deep into this because of that. But, you know, there are accessories available. So this isn't going to be purchased by the same people who are normally buying pickup trucks but i think for the people who haven't bought one before and are looking for something different this could work so there's a lot of good going on back there again the ride is very good comfort <laughs> pretty much identical to what we saw when we drove the tucson you know overall space is decent back seats not quite you know the space back there's a little bit you know, different i wouldn't say smaller but it's different you know like there's no armrest in the middle that would have been a nice thing to have you do have under seat storage which you know we usually do find with pickup trucks so you do have that there so there's some small places to be able to put things on the inside of this it works out pretty well again for a somewhat specific type of lifestyle i think that this will work and one of the reasons i do see this potentially being a replacement for those who are looking at crossovers is just the overall functionality you know you've got the drive modes and stuff similar to what you get on the other crossovers that we've tested from hyundai so we do have normal sport and smart modes and then we also do have the terrain selector so snow mud and sand so you do have some options there's not like Again, other pickup trucks where you can do things like locking the diffs. You know, there's no manual control for that. You can't put it into two-wheel drive mode. You know, keep in mind, this is a front-wheel drive-based vehicle. And in some markets, you actually can buy this front-wheel drive only. You know, ours here comes with all-wheel drive. So, yeah, there's just some different configurations depending on where you're going to be buying this. But I think overall, we probably will see them here in Canada. I just don't see them being as popular as yeah, again maybe the ford maverick but even that just i don't know <laughs> we're gonna have to wait and see exactly who's gonna buy these and how many they end up selling but you know what good on hyundai for doing this if you think back the last major announcement from a manufacturer coming out with a pickup truck that doesn't do pickup trucks was Mercedes-Benz and it was so poorly received before it even launched that Mercedes canceled their plans to bring the vehicle to North America. The X-Class was not available, at least in the United States and Canada. I believe you can get them in Mexico. So that was just such a dismal failure and I am hoping, you know, that Hyundai sticks with this. You know, it exists, right? I'm driving it. It's not just vaporware. It is a physical vehicle that I can drive around and can buy it too if you're able to find one at a dealership so it's great i'm glad choice is good and i do like it would i buy this over the tucson yeah i'd say yes i think the functionality of it works out pretty well but would i buy this over the ford maverick only time will tell we're gonna have to get behind the wheel of one and see how it performs 
and what might make that a compelling vehicle over this. But I hope you've enjoyed our video on this 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. I have enjoyed my time with it. If you have any questions about it, you can let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up to the video as well if you liked it. And also consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care.